Maybe you're seeing that Earth's spin is speeding up. And it is true that the shortest days of 2025 are happening now. Here to dispel the myths and give us the straight story about the year's shortest days is Graham Jones of Time and Date. Hi, Graham. Hi, Debbie. And um, hey, thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me on today um, to talk about this. Um, I, I got to say, Earth Sky has been a tremendous supporter of Time and Date um, uh, going back many years. Um, and, um, and, you know, you guys do such a great job at communicating science and just, yeah, thank thanks you. again for having thank me on you. today. Thank you so much. And thank you for coming. And we love Time and Date, too. So a lot of, a lot of, a uh, lot of, shared goals between our two organizations. Right, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, so we've been hearing stories that Earth's spin is speeding up. Is that the actual story? That is the actual story, um, yes. In recent years, um, Earth has been clocking up uh, the shortest days or the fastest spins um, of the atomic clock era going all the way back to the 1960s and 1950s. So yes, the Earth is spinning unusually quickly at the moment. Okay, but this are this year's, we have predictions for this year. So what are the, the dates again that are predicted to be the shortest days of 2025? Uh, that's right. So if we're looking at the absolute shortest days of this year, um, we know that they're going to happen around about July um, every year. Um, the shortest days, the fastest spin, um, it happens around this time of year. Um, that's to do with a, a kind of a yearly cycle um, of movements in Earth's atmosphere that affects the rotational speed of the Earth. So the short days normally come around July. Um, on top of that, there is a, a monthly cycle in the speed at which Earth is rotating. Um, this one is connected to the orbit of the moon. Um, when the moon is, is far above or below the equator, Earth tends to spin a bit more quickly. When the, when the moon is over the equator, um, the Earth is spinning a bit more slowly. So if we can kind of combine these things and we look at um, around about July, and we look at um, dates when the moon is near its furthest points, uh, north or south of the equator. Um, this gives us our, our shortest days for this year of um, falling around July 9th, July 22nd, and August 5th. Okay, and so July 9th has already passed. Do we know? I mean, ha has it been measured with atomic clocks? And do we know if the predictions matched the observations? Uh, yeah, so um, the figure we use to talk about how quickly Earth is rotating um, is something called length of day. Um, and this is based on the idea that on average, Earth is completing one rotation with respect to the sun in 24 hours. Um, that's 86,400 seconds. Um, now, the Earth is a really steady and a really consistent timekeeper. I mean, every Good old day. Earth. Uh, yeah, right. I mean, its, <laughs> it's speed is incredibly constant, but it's always within a millisecond over 24 hours. So this figure of the length of day, um, this actually tells us how many milliseconds faster or slower Earth rotated one spin uh, compared to its kind of target time of 86,400 seconds. Um, okay, so so wait, let's back up a minute. So a day is 86,400 seconds, and we're talking about changes on the order of milliseconds. So a millisecond is a thousandth of a second. And so we're talking about teeny tiny changes, right? Right, I mean, these are incredibly small variations. I mean, again, we should say that it is amazing how, uh, you know, the Earth with, I mean, you know, its circumference is what, 40,000 kilometers, uh, you know, 25,000 miles. Um, you know, it's making uh, 
it's making one full rotation with respect to the sun um, you know, in 86,400 seconds. The variation above or below that is, yeah, literally a millisecond faster or maybe a millisecond slower. Um, it, is a, it is a very, very small uh, variation that we're looking at. Um, yeah, and that's what this chart is showing, right? Because it's showing uh, what you're calling the length of day. So that's the variation. And it's showing that it's it's the change is only like 1.23, 1.36, 1.34, 1.25. It's just over a millisecond shorter than usual. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're looking on this chart uh, here is, uh, yeah, these are kind of the, the three dates that I mentioned um, around July 9th, July 22nd, August 5th. And um, yeah, this chart is telling us that actually the shortest day of all may have been uh, July 10th. Um, so yeah, a length of day of minus 1.36 milliseconds. So Earth, yes, it, it <laughs> spun once with respect to the sun in 1.3 milliseconds less than 86,400 seconds or, or 24 hours. <laughs> okay. And so let's talk about atomic clocks because that's those are the things that have been around since the 1950s that are used to measure the length of the day. And did they measure that July 10th was as short as was predicted? I asked you that before. I wasn't sure. Uh, if yeah, I heard right. the answer. <laughs> right. <laughs> so um, I, I mean, this whole business of of measuring these incredibly short variations in the length of day. Um, it, is a, it is a really complicated uh, process. Um, yeah. You know, firstly, we're, we're, we're using um, observational data that's coming in from a, a network of radio telescopes um, that, are, that are looking out at some of the furthest objects from us. They're, they're looking for radio signals coming from the heart of distant galaxies. And um, as wow. the Earth spins beneath these very distant sources, um, the data from that is then being combined with uh, measurements from a whole network of atomic clocks here on Earth. These things are all thrown together into a calculation. Uh -oh. data. Um, oh. There's a lot of noise in all of this, so there's some uh, there's some, you know, sort of corrections and smoothing that has to be made. So it's actually really difficult to uh, you know, arrive at the final number. Some of these corrections are made um, uh, a little bit of time after the date has passed. So we won't know for certain which date uh, will be the shortest day of 2025 just yet. But these, uh, these provisional results are certainly telling us that, um, yeah, July 9th, July 10th, um, they were unusually uh, short days. That we, we know that for sure. And I got really interested this morning in finding out how atomic clocks work. And one of the pages that I stumbled across was from the National Institute of Standards and Technology, which is the uh, organization that here in the U.S. is responsible for timekeeping. And this link that's on the bottom of your page here is a really interesting page about uh, how the history of atomic clocks and how atomic clocks work. And, and you know, we, we recommend that page. It's a good one. So, Graham, uh, what's, what's happening? I mean, are the, like, a lot of these stories that we've been seeing make it look as if the day is speeding up in some kind of permanent way, but that's not the case, right? Because the days this year were uh, short, but they weren't as short as the days in 2024. Is that right? That's right. So in, in recent years, uh, the shortest day of all that we've seen, um, this came last year. Um, this was on July the 5th. 2024. This was the, the shortest day of the atomic clock era. Um, on this day, the length of day was minus 1.66 milliseconds. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah. We, we have can... this chart for that as well. And so that was 2024, 1.66 milliseconds. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, now the interesting thing about the chart you're showing here, um, Debbie, is that this is showing the shortest 
um, days in the years uh, 2020 through to 2024. Um, the interesting thing with all of this is that since we started routinely measuring the length of day with atomic clocks, the shortest days that we ever saw um, were only uh, minus 1.05 milliseconds. Um, this happened in 2004 and 2005. And that was Earth's old speed record of the atomic clock era, just over one millisecond. Oh. The, in the interesting thing that's happened in recent years is that every, every July or around about every July, um, you know, Earth has, has shattered its old record. Um, and, you know, we've been looking at a shortest day of, um, you know, around about minus 1.5 milliseconds. Before this, the, sh I don't think the shortest day we'd ever seen uh, using atomic clocks was only minus 1.05 milliseconds. So it's these numbers that are, that are showing us that we are in a period of unusually fast rotation at the moment. But not everyone thinks that we're going to stay in that period of speeding up. Uh, this person, who is Leonid Zatov of Moscow State University, is a world authority on Earth's rotation, and he believes that there's going to be a deceleration. It hasn't happened yet. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, so uh, yes, yeah, so uh, Leonid has been uh, has been a very good friend um, of time and date, going back uh, many many years. Um, and um, yeah, as you say, I mean, he's one of the scientists in the world that spends a lot of time, uh, you know, thinking about this problem. Um, we do know that eventually the Earth is going to slow down again. I mean, how do we know that? Well, we know that the, the big picture um, is that the Earth's rotation is gradually decreasing over many, many, many years. Um, oh, that's right. This that's is to do right. with uh, this is to do with the moon and right. the tidal forces of the moon. There is this tidal friction which over very long time scales is acting as a brake on the Earth and, and slowing us down. So um, I mean if we go back, we're talking long time scales. If we go back a hundred million years, um, for example, um, the day was about 40 minutes shorter than it is now. It was only 23 hours and 20 minutes or so. So the really big picture is that Earth's rotation is slowing. But then within that very long term slowdown, that's where we're seeing these kind of, um, uh, you know, ups and downs. Right now, we're in this period of this, uh, you know, un unusual up where we have this uh, acceleration. Um, Leonid thinks that we are sort of at the end of this period, um, but he doesn't know for sure. Um, nobody knows for sure because it is actually really difficult to make long-term predictions about what's gonna happen with these little mini peaks and troughs in Earth's rotational speed. Um, I remember I talked to Leonid at the beginning of last year um, at the beginning of 2024. And, uh, you know, his hunch was that, uh, you know, the earth was about to slow down again and, um, you know, normal service would be resumed. But, you know, he said it was just a hunch. Um, then, uh, you know, a few months after we had that conversation, the earth clocked up its, you know, fastest ever spin of the atomic clock era in July last year. Um, so, yeah, you know, we really don't know. We do need to wait and see what the Earth is going to do. Um, Leonid, again, this year he has a hunch that we've kind of reached the end of this period of fast rotation. So he's putting his money on a slowdown coming up. But again, all he can do, like all of us, is to, is to actually see what happens from here. Um Okay, that is so cool. And so what that means is that we're not suddenly going to start spinning faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And faster. <laughs> right. Uh, happily, what we're looking at here is an incredibly speeded up version. Um, of, uh, that's not going to happen. Um, well, we don't think uh, we don't think that's going to happen. We we don't know when this current uh, period of fast rotation um, is going to come to an end. It could carry on for a few more years um, yet. Um, but we do know that that overall Earth's rotation 
um, is slowing just as part of the whole tidal friction between Earth and the moon. So what we're looking at here is, uh, uh, yes, happily we can say that this is unlikely to be happening. <laughs> okay, great. Graham, thank you so much. We really appreciate you being with us today. Very interesting. Oh, well, that's uh, that's great. I thank you very much for talking. I mean, it is a, it's a, it's a remarkably interesting uh, story, this one. I, I think one of the reasons it's so interesting is that it is just one of those things that's difficult to predict. Um, you know, 10 years ago, we didn't know that this period of faster rotation was coming along. Um, and, you know, even now, we don't know how long it's going to continue for. Um, and it's such a fundamental thing that we're talking about. Um, you know, it is the, you know, the speed at which our planet is rotating. And it's interesting to think that even though we are just talking about fractions of a millisecond, um, you know, it's interesting to think that there are some things that, uh, you know, we still struggle to predict or explain. Well, as my grandson says, we don't know everything. Well, absolutely. Yeah, he's <laughs> absolutely. got it. Right. Exactly right. Exactly right. I was surprised when he said that to me, but that is absolutely true. So, Graham, thank you. We would love to have you back again sometime. Excellent. Well, hey, thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, let me see. Oh, let's see. Am I in the wrong place here? Oh, I did not get my book. Well, I'm going to recommend it anyway. I want to recommend a book. And the book is called The Age of Miracles. And it's by Karen Thompson Walker. And it is a novel. And it's the premise is what would happen if Earth's rotation uh, suddenly started to slow down. So in the book, things start to get really interesting around the time that the slowdown gets to about 42 hours. So there's a 42 hour day instead of a 24 hour day. It's just a very interesting book to think about. So The Age of Miracles, I recommend it. And uh, we will be back here tomorrow speaking with the bad astronomer, Phil Plate, talking about the biggest black hole merger ever. And we hope you'll join us then. One Earth, one sky, Earth sky. <laughs>